<laughs> Not a pup like a dog. Young otters are also called pups. Ah. From the look of him, he's a very young pup. <coughs> he must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Huh? Otters are very playful and very curious. Almost as curious as a monkey. <laughs> I think he likes you. Better put this someplace safe. See you soon. The man said the otter was a pup. Maybe he liked to play fetch, too. Fortunately, he also liked to play catch. <laughs> How would they get home? And even worse, what would the quince say? No, we can't oh, start we off! Can't start off. <laughs> George was a super good swimmer, but the otter was even better. Okay, swimming was out. But George had a lot of other tricks up his furry sleeve. Otters might be fast in the water, but monkeys were fast on land. George just had to get the otter out of the water. But how? What did otters like? Ah. Huh? Maybe they just liked keys because they were shiny. Ah. 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 George had the beginnings of a brilliant monkey plan. Otters liked shiny things. Then maybe he'd follow the fish to land, and George could get his key. He did like shiny things. This was working better than George had hoped. But the otter was pretty fast on land, too. And now, he had George's fish fob. <laughs> Not only were otters fast in water and on land, but they had really great hiding places. <gasps> and then, George remembered. He must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Maybe that was the otter's home. <laughs> Oh, no. The otter was underground, and George was out of shiny things to lure him out. His only chance of getting that key was to find something else the otter might want. Then he remembered. Otters like to play. They play peekaboo, hide and seek, keep away and chase. Maybe otters would play Traja. <laughs> the trick to Traja was to make your toy look a gajillion trillion times more fun than anyone else's toy. And George was an expert at that.
It was by far the most amazing toy the otter had ever seen. <laughs> the otter hated to give up his shiny key. But the ball was more fun. <laughs> oh, wait till you see the pictures I took. I got a rose-breasted grosbeak, a pie-billed grebe, and a coot. You ready to go home? <laughs> ah, Mr. Quint's key. You kept it safe, George. <laughs> the otter loved both his new toys. And he didn't miss the key at all. Especially since his dad had four just like it. George knew he could find things shaped like the robot's parts. to find out if this would work. thought George was a real robot. <laughs> Being robotic for a whole hour was tiring. George was ready to get out of that thing. But he didn't want to ruin it for Hundley by letting him see the robot wasn't real. Since he couldn't reach the button, George decided to relax and wait till the elevator came. Oh no, I, I must have left the XF-17 at home. It's my favorite too. I can go get it while you finish setting up. What's it look like? Well, it's two inches tall, uh, it's red. Oh, oh, and it has no legs. George waited so long for the elevator that he fell asleep. Oh, hi, Professor. Hi. I just came to pick up a small red robot. You mean the one in the lobby? <laughs> he said two inches tall, but I guess he meant uh, two feet. Did you find my XF-17? Yes, it's so cute. How old were you when you built that? Six? I was 22. It's cute? I left it by the elevator because it got heavy. Heavy? There was the elevator. <laughs> Finally, George could go home. Oh, I left it right here. Oh, no. Someone must have kicked it. Check the floor. I don't think you could kick that thing across the room. Oh, sure you could. It's only two inches tall. You mean two feet. I know the difference between inches and feet, Professor. There's a runaway robot upstairs. It's small, red, and says XF-17 on the side. You got the controls? What controls? It has no moving parts. So confused. Uh, 
This sure didn't look like home. Who are all these strange people? That's not it. Is too. I know that handwriting anywhere. Ah! George, Professor Wiseman brought you to the museum because she thought you were my XF-17. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your outfit's so good you almost ended up on exhibit. Hey, that's a great idea. Huh? We promised an XF-17 model. We never said it wouldn't be monkey-powered. <laughs> and that's how George became a museum exhibit for a day. <laughs> Hiya, George. Huh? That man with the yellow pants, he said I could go see if you're awake. Are you awake? Oh. Uh-huh. Finally! Oh, you were sleeping forever! So, you know what I want to do today? Monkey stuff! <laughs> huh? <laughs> Wait, don't monkeys go out the window? Huh? Ah. All that morning, George showed Allie monkey stuff, like how to eat strawberries. Ah with your feet. Oops. <laughs> how to swing on a rope. How to sound like a full percussion section in an orchestra. And how to blow bubbles with an extra big monkey breath. I'm going to the store. Do you want anything, George? Did you know that monkeys can blow bubbles longer than anybody? <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. How about you, Allie? You need anything from the store? Oh, yes. Um, a flying trapeze. And a walkie-talkie, please. Um, I'll see what I can do. <gasps> Is that a squirrel? <laughs> I love squirrels. Oops. George! <laughs> George, it's kind of weird. The squirrel won't answer me. <laughs> but then George remembered how he washed Mr. Glass's windows on the very tall building. This was going to be easy. All George had to do was find his life vest, tie a rope to the front, throw the rope over a branch, and bring Allie down. <laughs> okay. You missed. But don't you worry. I can get it. <laughs> this is too small. It looks monkey-sized. <laughs> the rope was a good idea but George needed to attach it to something that Allie could put on, or get on. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, this raft is too flippy, George. Okay, let's think some more. George didn't have that many choices. Only a too short ladder, some pool toys, and a rope. What could be easier than holding on to a rope? <laughs> but we already tried the rope, George. I ran 
out of rope, George. Hey! <gasps> Look what you did, George! <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Huh? Hey, it's Mr. Yellow Pants! Did you get me the flying trapeze? Sorry, the store doesn't carry circus equipment for some reason, but I found these. Oh, walkie talkies. Oh, I have to show my grandmother. Bye bye. I'll call you later. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, George, did you have a nice time with Allie? <laughs> that night, George couldn't wait for lights out. And so the little mouse roared and the house fell down. Oh. <laughs> Good night, George. Happy dreams. This was the start of a beautiful and curious friendship. And we go hot. And when the squirrel comes in to get the nuts, we jump out and we say, Hi, ya squirrel! You think that'll work? Yeah, these flowers will look beautiful in that old kayak. Hiya, Mrs. Quint! Guess what? George and me, we're building a car so we can race in a race. All we need are car parts. Well, if you see any car parts lying around, just help yourself. <laughs> the broken boat and the car body looked a lot alike. <laughs> They're almost totally exactly the same. And, 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 and look it. It already has two seats. One for you and one for me. <laughs> Gee willikers, what on earth happened to that kayak? George and Allie had found a car body. Oh, ah. Now they just needed steering, wheels. Ooh, oh, yeah. This barn had wheels. <laughs> and a steering wheel with a horn. <laughs> Unfortunately, their car wasn't. Uh, whoops. <laughs> George got to thinking. If you want your car to roll, the wheels had better roll too. Uh, ah. We should use the wagon wheels? <laughs> First, he put the steering handle through the hole in the bottom of the boat. Then he nailed the boat to the wagon. We did it! The car was almost ready. Okay, we've got one, two, and three. But we still need... Hey, kids. Aren't you entering the derby race? It starts in ten minutes. Oh, no. But we're missing a car part and we don't know where to find it. Well, I'd offer to help you, but, um... We know, we know. No help allowed. Well, if you see anything you need, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to put on the brake! <laughs> He say break? George 
Mitch and Allie had their break. Well, it looks okay. We can test it on the way to the race. Aha! <laughs> Racer's ready. On your mark. <laughs> Get set. <laughs> it works! <laughs> hey, guys! You made it! <laughs> Go! My wagon! Oh, go, George! That's my buggy! For a while, George and Bill were neck and neck. Come on! Faster! Uh-oh! Meet the winner, Farmer Rinkin's Wagon. It was a rather unusual entry, but it met all the rules. And our runners up, George and Dally, <laughs> and Bill. <laughs> what ho! <laughs> That means, hey, what's up? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. A dragon is on the loose. <laughs> Don't want it getting into the castle again. The dragon! It followed us to the castle! <laughs> Good guard George had to stop the dragon. It would prove his bravery, and the king might make him a knight. Ah! Woo! <laughs> Nothing is worse than dragon breath. Ah! Except maybe dragon slobber. My banquet! Stop it! Stop! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> The king would never make good guard George a knight now. How can we have our celebration with that beast destroying the castle? All he had to do was put a bathtub in front of the castle and the kingdom would be safe. <laughs> but there was more than one way for a dragon to get into a castle. Oh, is it me, or is it you, Medini? <gasps> My castle, she's all broken again. What you really needed was a tub that went all the way around. Is that a bathtub that goes all the way around the castle? Uh-huh. Oh, great idea! Where do you get one of those? <sighs> Thankfully, dragons sleep a lot. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it's a bathtub that goes all the way around the castle. Good guard George thought of it. Dragons are afraid of baths. Hmm. I do not like this name, bathtub. 
I think we should call her Emote. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, how do we get water in there? Uh -huh. Oh, I got it. She's back. So, uh, we got a moat. But you're on the wrong side. Luckily, dragons can't climb trees, but they did eat loots. The moat had stopped the dragon from getting into the castle, but it stopped them too. And it was getting late and cold. Good guard George saw it. It was the perfect bridge for dragons. George, you okay? George was better than okay. He knew how to keep Charky off stage. You're a genius. <laughs> what is it? It's a drawbridge. To build a drawbridge, you need some wood and a way to keep the wood together and a hinge so your drawbridge can fold up and some rope and a pulley. so you can raise and lower your bridge. And you have to get rid of your stairs. That way, knights could enter, but dragons stayed out. <laughs> Sire, two riders approacheth. Something was wrong. This wasn't in the play. Come, come! Hmm. For building a dragon-proof drawbridge, I knight thee, Sir Giorgio! <laughs> George had saved the play, protected the castle, and become a knight. And he did it twice on Saturday. Benji and Willie were George's favorite mice in the entire world. And Bruno was the only gopher snake he knew personally. So when Mr. Zubel asked him to pet sit for a day, George was thrilled. Now, Bruno has already eaten an egg, so he won't be hungry anymore today. Don't feed him. <laughs> The mice must be fed, but I'm out of food. So I told the pet shop you'd be coming by to pick up mouse food. <laughs> George was determined to be the best pet sitter ever. George, I have to go talk to the park director about Heritage Week. Will you be okay by yourself? <laughs> be a good little monkey pet sitter. <laughs> of course they weren't happy. They were hungry. Time to get food. <laughs> when he went to make sure Bruno liked his new spot by the window, <gasps> he noticed Bruno had changed. <laughs> what happened to him? Hey, Snake, when Bruno saw that warm sun, he wanted to be in it. The sun was warm, but city life was too noisy for a snake. He wanted to find somewhere quiet. <laughs> Came back for this? <laughs> ah, I see Bruno shed his skin. Mr. Zubo was waiting for it. 
Huh? As a snake grows up, it wriggles out of its old skin. Did you think this was Bruno? <laughs> I'll bet Bruno is under his rock. That's where he always goes after he sheds. George was relieved to hear Bruno would be safe in his animal habitat. Until he remembered he left the habitat open. <laughs> Bruno must have crawled out. The mice thought the big smiling monkey had come to set them free. The sun was gone. Now it was too noisy and too cold. After life in a habitat, Benji and Willie wanted to explore. And they discovered a new world. Bruno got out of the apartment. <laughs> Being near a snake makes any mouse nervous. But Bruno wasn't interested in mice. His stomach was full, and he just wanted to find a comfortable place to relax. Soft soil is always inviting to a gopher snake. Why, thank you, George. How nice. Bruno thought the mice might know the way home, so he hurried to follow them. Mice had never seen a furry, plump snake with feet before. And this was the first time Hundley had ever seen mice in his building. <laughs> Hundley didn't realize he'd run outside until it was too late to get back in. Maybe those mice would lead him to an open window. George? I hope Bruno, Benji, and Willie didn't give you any trouble. <laughs> Everyone was happy. Back exactly where they belonged. Um, why is Hunley in our sink? Well, almost everyone. Hunley oh. planned to stay put until he recovered from his adventure. If there was one thing Yoki couldn't resist, it was a toy clown. <laughs> now, where was that cat? <laughs> Chef forgets his garlic. Hundley might be a door dog, but he wasn't very good at door knobs. <laughs> Fortunately, monkeys are excellent door openers. Unless the door is locked. Oh. 
Gnocchi thought it'd be much more fun if she and Hundley played outside. <laughs> Poor Hundley. Clearly, Hundley needed some monkey help. <laughs> Gnocchi was surprised that Hunley was still in the basement. Gnocchi was sure that a game of chase would make Hunley feel better. It did. It took his mind off basements. George could build a ramp to the window. A ramp stronger than a pizza box. Hudley was beginning to like this game. George had to remind him that he wanted to get out of the basement. Gnocchi had a lot of fun with the clown, but now it was Hundley's turn. Maybe Hundley just needed a push. George needed to think of something else. Maybe he didn't have to go straight up to the window. George didn't need one ramp. He needed a lot of ramps. George's ramps worked. Hey, <laughs> Pilinguini! What did you do to my basement, Giorgio? <laughs> Dylan and his mom were back. <laughs> Hundley had to hurry. <laughs> Yoki didn't know what was going on, but it sure looked like fun. Oh. Hundley? Oh, thank you. I thought we'd lost this forever. Look, Dylan. Clowny! <laughs> you are the best door dog. <laughs> Another job well done. Well, almost done. Hi, George. Where's the librarian? Oh, I see. Can you help me find Hundley's favorite book? It's called Dachshunds and Dandelions. A yellow book? No problem. George was very familiar with that color. Nope, not it. Nope, and nope, no, no. 
That's it! Dachshunds and dandelions. Finding books was hard. But George had an idea. If books were sorted by color, they'd be much easier to find. <laughs> it took a lot of work, but the library was fixed. It would be easy for people to find books now. Ah, oh, Giorgio, Giorgio. You know, I can't find a book. Yeah. It's Gnocchi's favorite book, too. It's called Mice Everywhere. Are you asking me what color the book is? <laughs> I don't know, but I do know one thing. It's very, 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 very big. Big is not a color. <laughs> That's it! Oh, thank you, Giorgio. You know, I got to get some cookbooks too, so I'll check this out up front. Bye bye, little buddy. <coughs> I mean, bye bye, little buddy. Hmm. Organizing books by color didn't seem to work. Maybe they should be organized by size instead. <laughs> Little books, medium books, big books, humongous books. George had fixed the library again. Ah, oh, George, what happened? The books are all messed up. Huh? Come here, I'll show you. This is where all the outer space books are supposed to be. But instead, you've got uh, bunny books, train books, bug books, Pink Pony books? Ah, oh, where are all the outer space books? <laughs> George tried to explain to Steve how he had organized all the books. <laughs> Did you arrange all the books by size? <laughs> That's amazing! But I don't think that's the way libraries work. <laughs> See, outer space books are supposed to go on this shelf, and books about dinosaurs go on that shelf, and all the other books, uh, I don't know where they go. <sighs> George wondered, if outer space books all go together, and dinosaur books all go together, well, then maybe train books go with other train books, no matter what size or color they are. Yeah, train books probably go together. Uh -huh. Hey, I get it. Maybe all the books are organized by subject. Cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, you've got a lot of rearranging to do. But don't worry, I'll help. We did it! The books are back in the right order. Great job, you hairy librarian. <laughs> I'm back, George. My, it looks neat as a pin in here. All the books are back where they should be, on the shelves according to their subject. Uh, right? Well, mostly right. Books are typically arranged by subject, then by author, alphabetically. Oh. <laughs> Except storybooks. They go together by author. <laughs> I'm sure I can put things right in no time. Great. <laughs> Sounds like you did a great job, George. Hey, maybe you'd like to help out at the library every Saturday. 
helping Mrs. Dewey was fun, but exhausting. Yoo-hoo! George! You forgot your book! <laughs> On the other hand, only a librarian would give you Adventurous Henry for another two weeks. What could be better than that? <laughs>